I'm gonna walk you through how to make stunning motion trails in After Effects. Follow along and let's dive into it. Okay, so I have a clip here of a guy doing parkour in a back alley, semi-static shot. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rotoscope my subject. So I'm gonna double click on my source video and then it's gonna take me to the layer panel. And then from here, I'm gonna select the rotor brush tool. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit and I'm gonna start in the first frame by just rotoscoping my subject roughly. So holding option is gonna remove what I want and the green part is gonna select the parts that I want. So I'm just gonna go through this and I'll speed this through real quick. If I click option W, I could use the refine edge tool on his hair. Okay, so I'll look at my alpha, see how that looks. Okay, that's looking pretty good. So maybe I'll use the refine edge tool on his hands a little bit. And since he's gonna be in a lot of motion, I'm gonna use motion blur. I'm gonna enable that in my rotoscope settings, in my rotor brush settings. And when I'm all set with my roto, I could just go to file, export, add to render queue. And then under my output module, I could do high quality with alpha or lossless with alpha. And this will speed up the editing process. And pre-rendering this will speed up the editing process. So once that's done, I'll import this back into my comp. And on my bottom layer with my roto, I'm actually just gonna duplicate that. And then I'm gonna hide my roto layer. I'll click on this little guy in the middle and then I'll click on this to get rid of it. So it's there if I need it, but don't need it right now. So my bottom layer, I can get rid of my roto brush effect. So this is just my regular clean plate original footage. And on the top is my rotoscoped subject. I'm gonna duplicate my top layer once again. So now I have two versions of the roto. I'm gonna go to my effects and presets and I'm gonna grab the echo effect. I'm gonna drag that onto my middle layer and you can see immediately it starts to do something. So I'm gonna play around with these settings a little bit. So echo time, I'm gonna keep this as is. Number of echoes, I'm gonna make this 15. And you can see immediately it changes here. And then my starting intensity, I'm gonna keep that as one. Then under echo operator, I'm gonna change this from add to composite in front. So my goal here is to have the echo start once his foot actually hits the wall here. So I'm gonna keyframe my starting intensity. And I'm actually just gonna make this zero. And then I'm gonna hit U to reveal the keyframe. And I'm gonna go back a little bit and I'll make another keyframe. Then I'll go forward again and I'll make this one. And you could see as his foot hits it, it's almost like it triggers the echo effect and that's when it starts to come about. Okay, from here, I'm gonna add directional blur to this effect. And this kind of just blends the echo all together. I could change the direction of it, obviously, because it's called directional blur. So I'm gonna make that something like this. And actually on second thought, I'm gonna animate my number of echoes. So I'm gonna set that to zero. And then just with my other keyframes, I'm gonna make it go from zero to the full 15. This is just helping the effect kind of grow and intensify as he starts to do his flip. So from when he lands, I'm gonna do the opposite. So I'm actually gonna take these keyframes, these four keyframes, I'm gonna copy them and then I'm gonna go to edit, paste reverse keyframes. So this is just gonna flip it around and this is gonna end my effect. And I'll just scoot this down a little bit so right when his foot hits the ground, my effect comes out. That looks good. And then adding a few effects like a glow, I can make this really stand out. So here's the final result. You could also create something like this. Thanks for watching. See you next time.